So I came across a video the other day on YouTube where a guy was saying that the earth must be flat because buildings aren't crooked. And essentially here's what his argument is. And I'll put the link uh, to the original videos in the description for you. But here's what he's saying. He's saying that if you had a flat earth and you built a building on it, like this, then if you were in these upper left corners here and you drop the plumb bob, we always see them going straight down. So we have a weight on a string. And so this is what we observe in the real world is that these go straight down. If, however, the earth was round, then the plumb bobs go to the center of the earth. And here's what would happen instead. Instead of pointing straight down, they would point towards the center of the earth. And so the corners of our building should be crooked like this. And as you can see in reality, they hang plumb. That's what you see. That's reality. But we're going to go with the globe theory because we've only got a theory. So we're going to tie my new plumb bob over to the center of my little earth, my globe earth. And ironically, the keys hang just down with the plumb bob as well, naturally. So now you can see this angle of the roof to the wall has changed from 90 degree to 75 degree if we're going to keep it. And so he says, since we don't see buildings that do this, that seems ridiculous, um, the earth must be flat. And he does some measurements um, with this to show what the angles are and does this really nice proof. So here's the problem with his argument, is his scale is really off. And scale makes a big difference. So the building that he uses is probably around 2,000 kilometers tall and about 350 kilometers wide. That's just my estimation by looking at his diagram. So if we built a building this large compared to the Earth, uh, we would have a problem with the walls being uh, vertical. However, if we think about the Earth as being um, about 6,100 kilometers, this distance here, this building here is probably around 3,000 kilometers across and maybe 800 kilometers tall, I'm just estimating here. Um, and if we had a building that large, yes, we would see the effect of the curvature of the Earth and these lines not being vertical. That would make a huge difference. However, our buildings are so small compared to the curvature of the Earth that it's really negligible in what we see. And so just to say that is one thing, but he does a good video about really doing the angles and doing the math, and, and the math is correct if we had really large buildings. So what I would do with my students is let's actually do a real example and see what happens and see the actual difference. So we could do this work by measuring the angles and finding the angle difference here, uh, which is fine to do. Um, but in order to do that, we might need to know some trigonometry and some other things. But we can just do this really with similar triangles. And that's what I'm going to show here today. So if we took this line here, this, this line that's going to go from the building to the center of the earth, and we make a right triangle by cutting this building in half and going straight down. So imagine the building is actually this trapezoidal building rather than the rectangular building if it was this large and these, these lines were plumb. In other words, we took these and we made these going towards the center of the earth. Then the roof of our building is longer than the floor of our building. And it's smaller by this much right here. So I wanna calculate this length right here. I wanna see how much off the building actually is. So just for an example, we'll take the widest building in the world, which is the New Century Global Center in China. And this building is 500 meters across and 100 meters tall. And I'll do it in kilometers. So 500 meters across is half a kilometer. And 100 meters tall is a tenth of a kilometer. So this part of the right triangle here, the roof of the building then, will be a quarter of a kilometer across. And we need to find uh, this length down here. How long would the bottom of the building be? And then we could subtract that to find that difference right there. Now the radius of the Earth is about 6,371 kilometers. And so that's the distance from here to here. So we actually have two right triangles here. We have this large one that goes to the top of the building and we have the smaller one that goes to the base of the building. And I'm going to redraw these triangles so that we can compare them more easily. 
So this triangle on the left is to the top of our building. That's that quarter kilometer there. And then the height is going to be 6,371.1 kilometers. That point one is including the height of the building on top of the earth. This other triangle, which goes to the base of the building, we don't know how long the base is, but the radius of the earth is 6,371 kilometers. And now we can set up our proportions to solve for this length here. I'll do the internal ratios. So you have x over 6371 is equal to 0.25 over 6371.1. We'll multiply both sides by 6371 to solve for x. And that gives us a length of 0.24999 kilometers across. And the original length was 0.25. So to find out how much it's off by, we're gonna do the subtraction. So we'll do 0.25 minus this result. And we get this number here. So this is how many kilometers off it's going to be from being perfectly vertical. Now this is in scientific notation and it's in kilometers, so to get a better sense, let's go ahead and multiply by a thousand to find how many meters it is. And then we can multiply by a thousand again to find out how many millimeters it is. So that's less than four millimeters. So if we use the plumb bob to measure the size of the buildings, would they be parallel? No, they would be slightly off on a curved earth. However, the amount is so tiny, it's so imperceptible, that we would never notice it with the human eye. And that's why buildings don't look like they're not at 90 degree angles. And besides, most large buildings, their architecture doesn't have perfectly straight uh, vertical and horizontal lines anyway. They do a lot of different things with the architecture, probably because there are other considerations of force and pressures and all kinds of architectural things that I don't know about that make it difficult to build a building in that way anyway. And so four millimeters can easily be compensated in other ways when they design these buildings. So students can do this with other buildings in the world, in their town, they could do this with their school. They could make these right triangles, do the measurements, and see just how far off that would be. And the truth is, it's gonna be off a little bit no matter what. Even in my house, which is very small relative to uh, this building here, I could still do it and see how many parts of a millimeter the walls should be off from 90 degrees. So that you have it, and if you have students who want to do this work a little more quickly to experiment more, uh, here is a formula that I made, which basically does the same steps as I showed previously with the right triangles, just does it all in one step. So here we're finding the ratio here, uh, and here we're subtracting it from half the width of the building to find the distance that it's off by, and then we convert it to millimeters by multiplying by one million. So that's a formula that we can use, which essentially does all the steps I did previously all in one. And the advantage of that is this. Here I programmed that formula into a spreadsheet. And so if we just type things in in meters, so here we had a building that was 100 meters tall and 500 meters wide, then we can see that the distance from true 90 degrees in millimeters is the same that we got before, just under four millimeters. And so students can change these values to any building in the world they want. So for example, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai is about 838 meters high, and the base is a strange shape. So I estimated about 150 meters. And with that, we get 9.8 millimeters. So uh, a little bit less than one centimeter. So students could do something like this, or they could make up their own numbers to really explore at what point does it really become significant? At what point does the curvature of the earth really impact the sides of buildings? And in the video, the gentleman makes the argument that, well, if you had a brick layer and he used a level, you could make a brick wall and it, you could do that forever. Um, and it'll be perfectly flat always. And it'll be perfectly flat at a local level but at some point though, there is gonna be a curve. It's just, we don't see it at the scale that we live on the earth. We don't build buildings to the scale that he's talking about where you would actually see the curvature, but you actually would see it at some point 
and students could explore at what point do you think it would be significant. And it actually exists everywhere, but it's just so small that we'd never really notice it. Enjoy doing this type of activity with your students. Thanks for watching and please consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much.